Long ago in the faraway land of Uz, there lived a man named Job. Job was a good man. He loved God. He refused to do wrong. He was honorable. And he was rich. He had thousands of sheep, camels, oxen, donkeys, and servants, and ten children. Job was the greatest man in the land, and everything in his life went smoothly. Meanwhile, Satan took notice. He complained to God about Job. He only serves you because you give him so many blessings. If you take away Job's blessing, he'll curse you right to your face. God then told Satan to do with Job as he pleased, but on one condition, he could not harm Job. Satan slunk away, devising a devilish plan to make Job turn against God. One day, as Job was simply enjoying life, a servant ran up breathless with his devastating news. All the oxen and donkeys were stolen by an invading force, and the servants were killed. I barely escaped. Right as Job was hearing this horrible news, another servant ran up, shouting out, A huge fire came and burned all the sheep and killed all the servants. Another servant was running to Job, sobbing in terror. Job, the enemy came and stole all the camels and killed the servants. The servant had hardly finished when another servant came running to Job, screaming the most horrible news of all. Your children were having a feast together, and a terrible wind destroyed the house. Your children are all dead. In an instant, Job lost everything, his wealth and his family. They were gone. The grief was painful. Job tore his clothes, shaved his head, and fell on the ground. Satan thought Job was going to be mad at God, but instead, Job worshipped God. The Lord gave me everything, and he has the right to take it away. I will still praise God, Job said. Satan then asked God if he could make Job sick. He was sure that Job would then curse God. God told Satan that he could continue with his plan, but was not allowed to kill Job. Then it happened. Job broke out with sores over his entire body. He became very ill. The pain and itching were so unbearable that he took broken pieces of pottery to scratch the sores. Job's wife was of no help at all. She came up to her husband and growled, You're still trying to do good? Just curse God and die. Job did not sin. He continued to worship God. Even Job's friends started to turn against him. They thought that Job must have sinned for God to punish him like this. They were all trying to give him advice and tell him what to do. Instead of helping Job and praying for him, they criticized him. Through all this, Job still did not sin. He continued to trust and worship God. Job started to lose heart. He did not understand why God would allow these things to happen to him. So God spoke with Job and explained to him that as God, he created Job and everything in existence. As God, no one had the right to question him or his decisions, even though it may not make sense. God was trying to show Job a valuable lesson. Job responded in the only way possible. He worshipped, and he repented. Eventually, Job's suffering stopped. Satan's plan did not work. Job still loved God. God was so pleased with Job that he healed him and gave him back everything he lost. This time, he blessed Job with more children, wealth, and possession than he could ever imagine. Job even lived until he was 140 years of age. The end of Job's life was even better than his beginning. Everybody close your eyes. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for, uh, for the story of Job and for his faith in you. Help us to learn from him. And Lord God, if there is any boy or girl in this place who does not know Jesus as their Savior, their best friend, and I just ask that you will help them 
to make that choice today, to choose Jesus to be their Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty, so this month we're talking about like things that are big and things that are small, okay? And uh, a big part of that is Job. So we'll be talking a lot about Job this month. Um, let me see here. I've got a couple questions for you. All right, everybody, does everybody know what a tangerine is? Everybody knows what a tangerine is. Yeah, it's a fruit, kind of like an orange, right? Okay, so is a tangerine big or small? Small, yeah, because like the picture shows, I mean, they, can, they fit in our hand. All right? Now, would a tangerine still be big if you were a bug? Would it? So to that bug, is a tangerine big or small? Yeah. So to us, a tangerine is small, but to a tiny little bug, a tangerine is big. It's all about your perspective, how you see it, okay? How about this? How about a giraffe compared to us? Is it big or is it small? Is it? So that's, see a little dotted line? That's a little, little dotted person. So giraffes are huge. Like if a giraffe was in here, his head would probably be close to the ceiling. They're big, very, very, very big. Now, how big would a giraffe be big or small compared to... A blue whale. Look at all those big animals compared to a blue whale. They're huge. Blue whales are huge. So if you're a blue whale and you see a giraffe, are you going to be like, huh, that thing is little bitty, or whoa, that thing is huge? Yeah, blue whales are like, man, giraffes, their things are tiny. Elephants are tiny. What else is up there? There's all these elephants, giraffes, gorillas, all kinds of things. They're all tiny compared to a blue whale. Okay. Now, Mr. Bradley, he kind of hit on this a little bit ago. All right. So is the moon small or big? Like to us, is the moon small or big? The moon's big to us. So how was the moon compared in size to earth? Is it small or big compared to earth? Yeah, so the moon is smaller than Earth. I really like that picture. That's just cool, man. Space is cool. All right? Okay. Now, you've seen this picture too. Okay, so think about the Earth compared to the size of the sun. Is it smaller or bigger? Yep. See where Earth is? That little bitty dot? And then the big, the big yellow ball is the sun. That's the sun that we see in the sky that gives us sunburn. All right? So Earth is teeny tiny. Even the biggest planets are smaller than the sun. All right? Is the sun the biggest star in the universe? Who? All right, all right, raise your hand. Who, say, who thinks the sun is the biggest star in the universe? Raise your hand. Okay. Who thinks the sun is not the biggest ball in the universe? Raise your hand. All right, it's about half and half. Okay. All right, let's see. How big is the sun compared to these other stars? See the sun, that little yellow dot way at the top? Those other circles, the blue one, the red one, the orange one, the yellow one, those are all stars that are bigger than the sun. That's how big the sun is compared to those, or let me say, that's how small the sun is compared to those other stars in the universe. Isn't that crazy? Like three million Earths could fit inside of our sun. That's just crazy. But it's huge. So in the universe... Are there just things that are so huge that it's even hard for us to understand them? Yeah. Yeah. The giant red circle is a huge, super huge, massive star. It is so huge. It's so big that the sun is just that little dot. Massive. Blows my mind. But I love thinking about that stuff. Okay. All right. Shh, 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 shh. All right. Just hang on. Hang on. Hang on. All right. Just calm down. Now, things in our lives can look big or small depending on our perspective, okay? So, like, let's just say, all right, right now, today, all right, I realize on my way to church that this shirt right here is inside out. Now, is that a big problem or a small problem? It's a small problem. I could make it a big problem. I could be all upset about it and just be like, oh, man, all these kids are going to think I'm a big goofball because my shirt's inside out. 
And I thought about that. I was like, people are going to notice that my shirt's inside out, but you know what I said? I don't care. That's not a big deal. All right? It's my perspective. Okay? So we've got problems, we've got troubles in our life, and sometimes they seem huge when we're going through them. You know, because it's hurting us, maybe we're sad, maybe we're um, angry, we don't know how it's going to end up, we're worried about stuff, and sometimes we make a big deal out of it. Have you, ever, have you ever had a problem and your parents are like, eh, that's not a big deal? You know, sometimes, sometimes you're freaking out about stuff and your parents are like, it's going to be okay. Parents aren't worried about it, right? Because they see it differently. Maybe your parents have been through something very similar and they're like, well, I survived it, I know you're going to survive it. Maybe your parents are like, you know what? God is bigger than all of our problems, and you don't have to worry about it because God's got you. Maybe, right? So you're going to get through this stuff. How big is God's love for us? Huge. Bigger than the universe. That's, that's, that's good. It's like Mr. Bradley says, God created this huge universe that is just it's so big we can't even measure it. But his... He loves us even more than this awesome, awesome universe he he created. That's pretty, that's something, that's pretty special. You are pretty special when it comes to God. Now, how big is our love when compared to God's love? Itty bitty. Some of us think that we love God a lot, and maybe we do, but his love will always be bigger than, for us than our love is for him. Does that make sense? His love is perfect. His love doesn't stop. Sometimes, sometimes our love kind of, it depends on our feelings, right? If we're in a good mood, man, we, or good mood, we love everybody. If we're happy, yeah, yeah, I love everybody. But if you're in a bad mood, man, you might not want to hug somebody. You might not want to tell your parents that you love them because you're mad at them because they made you clean your room or something like that. You know what I mean? Our love depends on our feelings sometimes, but God's doesn't. His love for you never, ever changes. It never, ever stops. Even when you mess up, he still loves you the same. His love is bigger than the universe. All right, so we're talking about this dude. What's his name again? Job. Who, whenever they showed his name up there, who thought it was Job? Me too. I know. So they need to change the spelling of his name. They need to throw an E on the end of it. That would kind of help out a little bit. All right, so yeah, so Job, he lived, does anybody remember where he lived? What was that country called? You remember? Nope, not um, close though. Uz, I guess it's called Uz. Maybe it's Ooze, I don't know. Ooze, Ooze is kind of cool. Ooze, I don't know, thinking about Ninja Turtles. You might see Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles 2 movie, Secret of the Ooze. Anybody, no? Okay, it wasn't all that great. Anyway, okay, so Job lived a long, long, long time ago. Way before Jesus was, uh, came to earth, Job lived a long time ago. His story is in the Old Testament. He lived in this land called Uz or Ooze or however you want to say it. Um, and the Bible says a couple things about Job. They say, the Bible says two really cool things about Job. It says that he was, well, it does say that, but it says he was blameless and He was upright, or he had integrity. Does anybody know what blameless means? You might know, blameless. What you got? He doesn't get blamed for things. Okay, okay, yeah, blameless, without blame. Yeah, what do you think? Okay, so he's not blaming people and stuff like that. Do you think it might mean that maybe he, he doesn't mess up? You know, like nobody can blame him for anything because he hasn't done anything wrong. Blameless, okay. Who, uh, what about integrity or being upright? Who knows what that means? Yeah. Mmm, mmm. That hit the nail right on the head. Dink. Doing the right thing when no one else is around. Who's ever been in a room by themselves with some candy and you're like, and you just kind of, it's not your candy now. And you just kind of sneak over there without asking anybody. You take that candy and you, you, know, you eat it. And then you like, you hide the wrapper. You know, you're sticking it in your pocket. Or you go bury it in the trash, you know, so your mom, dad can't see the wrapper. Who does that? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Who's done that at their friend's house? I've done it. Who's, who's, who's snuck around 
and uh, done anything that you knew you weren't supposed to do, but you did it because nobody else would know. I've done it. Yep. So a person with integrity, even though they're all by themselves and they have a chance to do something that they shouldn't do, they choose to not do it. They choose to do the right thing even when nobody else is around. Now, even though nobody else is around, who still knows what we're doing? God. God sees everything. God knows everything. There's nothing God doesn't know. There's nothing he doesn't know. Yes, right? He knows everything. He sees everything. He hears everything. He knows exactly what we're doing. So Job, that says a lot about Job. Blameless, he's upright, he's integrity, he makes good decisions all the time. And the Bible says that... Um, that Job was, he would pray for his kids. He would make sacrifices every day. Remember, that's what they did back then. Um, he was worried about his kids getting saved and stuff. So he was praying. He was just a good, godly man. And everybody knew that. All right? And the Bible says that that was his regular practice. Every day he spent time with God, praying, worshiping, and all that kind of stuff. Kind of like what we should be doing every day. Job's relationship with God was super close because he spent time with him. All right? Now, like the video was saying, one day something bad happened. Okay, so who, who remembers what happened to Job? How many kids did he have? Ten kids. Can you imagine having ten kids running around your house? I would go crazy. Anyway, he had ten kids. What happened to them? They all died. In one day, they all died. They got killed in one day. Okay, what was he? Um, he had a lot of animals, right? Yeah, so he, he had cows, he had camels, he had sheep, thousands and thousands of them, all right? He was very rich. And what happened to his animals? Some got stolen and some got killed. So it's where he had no more animals left. And that's how he, had, he made money. So he was out of money now, okay? His kids died and uh, he has no more money. His job is over with. How do you think he felt about that? My gosh, yes. Remember, what did he do whenever all that stuff happened? He, he tore his clothes, which back then meant that he was like, he was hurting really bad. His heart was broke. He shaved his head. That's what they did back then, you know? And what was the next thing he did? Yep, he got down on his knees and he praised God. Crazy, isn't it? Like, has anybody had a family member who died? What did you do? You cried, you were sad, maybe, maybe even got a little bit angry. People get angry, you know. Did you go and thank God that they were dead? Mm -mm. What about who's lost a best friend? Who said, yeah. You know, you have friends that aren't your friends anymore, and that hurts. Or maybe you had a friend who died. And after that friendship was over with, did you go and praise God and be like, Lord, I thank you, God, you're good. Did you do that? Who's had a pet that died? Pets died. Family members that get sick. You know, bad things happen. Car wrecks, boo-boos, all that kind of stuff. Is the first thing that you think of to get on your knees and go, praise God, you're so good. God, I love you, Lord. Or are you like, are you sad or are you angry? Maybe you even you're mad at God. Has anybody ever been mad at God before? I have. I got mad at God when things didn't go my way. You know, broken relationships and stuff. I was mad at God. I did not do what Job did. But in all my years of broken hearts and hurts and all this kind of stuff, I've learned that even though my heart hurts, I can still thank God because God still does good stuff out of the bad stuff. Does that make sense? It's like Job. Job's, Job's relationship with God was so strong. He loved God so much that even though he, all of his kids were dead, his wife's yelling at him, why don't you just curse God and die? You know, she's not being very supportive right there, is he? You know why? Because her heart was hurting too. She lost all her kids too, but her relationship with God evidently wasn't as close as Job's was because she was mad and she was fussing at Job and Job was loving God when his heart was broken, you know? That's powerful stuff. So, um, and you know, and the devil was doing that. The devil was up in heaven and he was asking God, he's like, hey, man, can I, uh, you know, this guy Job, you know, you bless him. He's rich. All you do is take care of him. He's never going to be mad at you because all you do is just bless him with good stuff. 
And so God's like, okay, I will let you do some stuff. I'll let you put sores all over him because I know that he's not going to say anything bad about me. I know that. I know his heart. So Satan did it. Now that doesn't mean every, does, every time something bad happens, is it always the devil? Nope. It's not always the devil. Some people think it is, but it's not. Sometimes bad things happen because we just make bad choices. Sometimes it's the devil. But no matter what happens, God is in control, and we can always trust God no matter what. So Job loved and respected God and all that kind of stuff, even though all this bad stuff was happening. He didn't yell at God. He praised God after all that bad stuff happened. So um, who, who up in here is a worrier? Where are my worriers at? Who worries all the time? We got folks worrying about things that are, do you have control over all that stuff? No, no, not always. You know, who are my people who just get mad all the time, like super mad? Just, you're fast to get angry. Your fuse is like that long. So if you were a firecracker and somebody lit your fuse, it'd be like, bam, just immediately. Yeah? So, what does Jesus say about worrying and being anxious and all that and being upset all the time? What does he say about that? Does anybody know? Can any of my Bible scholars in here remember what Jesus says about that? No? Nobody? What? What does he say? Calm? Okay. Be calm. Chill, dude. Be chill. Calm down, bruh. Yeah. Matthew chapter 6 talks about that. Jesus is preaching to people and stuff, and he's telling people, hey, I'm telling you, don't worry. Don't worry about stuff you can't control. All right? Why is your faith so small? All this stuff, people who don't believe in me are the ones who worry. You believe in me, you don't need to worry because I'm taking care of you, even when bad things happen. God knows your needs. Jesus told them that. My Father in heaven, he knows what you need. You don't need to worry. All right? So why do we worry all the time? Isn't that crazy? Things that that probably in the long run don't even matter. So he he doesn't tell us to worry because he's bigger than that. How big is our God? He's huge! Just think about, we learned about all this stuff he just created, right? He created the universe and those big, huge stars and stuff like that. All right? So we, we, we looked at those pictures of the earth compared to the planets, compared to the sun, and how small the sun is compared to all these other humongous stars. But yet, we have a God who made all of that stuff. All right? Anybody ever seen one grain of sand? One speck of sand. Has everybody ever seen one? One little speck of sand. All right? Can you see it? Everybody see it? Okay. All right. Now, imagine this. Imagine you had that one speck of sand on your finger, and you held it out as far as you can on your arm, and, you, and you're seeing, and you're outside. You're outside. Okay, everybody, turn your brains on. Imagine you're outside. And it's night, and you have a speck of sand on your fingertip. And you you stretch your arm out as far as you can, and you're looking at that tiny little speck of sand. Okay? Everybody got it? And you're looking up into space. You know what is out there and the size of that little speck of sand out there in space? Show it! That picture right there is a picture from the Webb Telescope. And that's, that's a newer telescope, and it took a picture of deep, deep space. That's the farthest that we've ever seen out in the universe. In that picture, they said, if we were standing on Earth with a speck of sand, that telescope is looking at that little speck of sand out in the universe, and that's what it saw. Blows my mind. In this picture are thousands of galaxies full of millions and billions of stars all over. Just, isn't that crazy? That's so crazy. It blows my mind. Every one of these galaxies is just crazy huge, and they're billions and billions and billions of miles away. And God made that. The Bible says God created that. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, God created in the heavens and the earth. God created the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. God made that. All right? God's holding it all together. He's keeping it in place. He's in control of all of it. It's amazing. He holds it in his hand. 
There's, there's something in Isaiah here. I want to, I want to read Isaiah chapter 40. It says, Who measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Just imagine all the oceans on the earth, and God's holding it in the palm of his hand. And he measures it out as he's pouring it out on the earth. God measures the hollows of the water, the waters in the hollow of his hand. He marked off the heavens with a span. It's like, says he's like he's opened up curtains. Anybody open curtains up? Imagine God, he's just measuring the universe. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. You know what I mean? And then all that's in it. Our God is making that. He is, he is huge. He measured and he weighed the mountains in scales. So he's like picking up a mountain. He's putting it on the scale. And he p- picks up another mountain, puts it on another scale. And he's like, yeah, that's about right. And you know, he puts it in its place. God is huge. And he is awesome. And he is powerful. And the Bible says he sits up in heaven and he's looking down at the earth. And we're just like grasshoppers because he's so high up. And we're just like, we're tiny little specks running around all over the earth. But God sees us and he knows us. He loves you. That's how good our God is. He could be like, whenever you look at an anthill, do you care about those ants? You know what I mean? And you're just like, poof, you're kicking the ant hill, and you've got magnifying glass, and you're burning the ants. And you're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You, just, you don't care about those tiny little specks of ants. But think about God. God is that big. He's looking down at us. And just imagine if we were like the little ants running around. God's not over there kicking our dirt hills, and he's not burning us with a magnifying glass. He's loving us. He is up there. We're way down here. And God is listening to every single prayer you make to him. God is watching every single move you make. He loves you. He cares about you. He has an entire universe in his hands, and he is worried about you. Well, he's not worried, but he loves you. He's concerned about your life. He cares about you. He wants you to love his son, Jesus. He sent his son way down here just for you because he wants you to, to love him and believe in him. And if you choose Jesus and you have a relationship with him, then you'll get to be with this awesome God forever. Every bad thing you've done will be forgotten. It'll be erased. It'll be like, it'll be like on this board. You know, we're messing up. You know, we lie, we cheat, we steal, you know, we uh, call names. And you know what? We got all this stuff and all these bad things keep stacking up because we keep messing up all the time, don't we? And all these sins, if if they got a a board, this is Mr. Michael's board, and all this whole board would be covered of all the bad things that I've done in my life. And the minute I believed in Jesus, Jesus did this. He erased all of that stuff. He threw that eraser away and he says, that's not there anymore. You are mine. You will be with me forever. I will never leave you. My blood that I bled all over that cross washed you clean. Every bad thing you've done is gone because you believe in me. That's what Jesus says. He loves you, boys and girls. He will never, ever stop loving you. It's the greatest love in the universe. It's perfect. You can never out-love God. You can never out-give God. He loves you so much. And all he asks is that you love him back. Love his son, Jesus. Believe in him. Believe he died on the cross. Believe he was buried in a grave for three days. Believe he came back to life on Easter Sunday that we just celebrated. And he's alive today. He's up in heaven watching you right now. He loves you. Now, if you want this awesome, powerful Jesus, he's just, he's waiting for you. He is waiting for you just to say, okay, Jesus, I believe. I choose to love you, Jesus. You are awesome. I want to be with you. Does anybody want to do that right now? Okay, come on up here. If you, let's pray. We're going we're gonna to talk to Jesus. We're going to talk to him, knowing that he's way, way, way far up there, but he can still hear us. I can talk right here. People outside can't even hear me, but Jesus hears me. It's awesome. He cares about what we say. He cares about what we think about. He cares about if we're scared or if we're not scared, all that stuff. He cares about what's going on in your families, if your parents are doing good or if your parents are not doing good, how you're doing in school, all this kind of stuff. He cares. He loves you. And he'll never stop. All right? 
Let me tell you a little something. So, last week my uncle died. And uh, so he had cancer and he died. And he was a good, good man. But that's okay, you know, and I, I was sad, but I wasn't angry at God. Number one, because I learned to be like Job, to thank God when things don't go my way. I wanted my Uncle Kelly to live a long, long life, but God had other plans, and that's okay, you know? So I thanked God. Instead of being mad at him, I thanked him for my Uncle Kelly. I thanked him that he was saved because he loved Jesus, so I know that he is with Jesus right now because he believed in him. I thank God for the love that Uncle Kelly gave me and the love that he spread out in our family. He was a loving man. I've never heard that guy say a bad word about anybody. Nothing. He was a good guy. And he's with Jesus right now. And that's what I want for all of you. That one day, when you die, because the Bible says everybody's going to die, that when you die, you will be with Jesus. Loved. Praising Him. Singing Him. Worshiping. For the, forever. It never stops. It's awesome. All you got to do is believe. Okay? I'm going to close your eyes. Let's talk to Jesus. Like, like talk to him. Okay? And just tell him right now. I want, I want you right now. Tell him you believe in him. Just say it. Jesus, I believe in you. Yeah, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Jesus, I believe in you. Yes. Jesus, I love you. Now thank him. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. That's it. That's it, boys and girls. Choosing to believe. Choosing to love him. Man, you're good. You said it with your mouth. Now, just go out there and tell other people about him. Tell people about your love for Jesus. Tell, tell them how much he loves you. Tell them how big he is, that no matter what is going on in your life, Jesus can handle it. He will get you through it. He will help you. He promises that. Tell people about him. Help them to believe. That's our mission, y'all. That's what he wants us to do. You little warriors. You little soldiers, go out there. The devil's trying to keep people away from Jesus. And it's our job to go out there and tell them about how much Jesus loves them. Because Jesus, he wants to bring them all in. And you can help out with that. You believe it? Do you believe it? Yee! Yee yee! You can do it. I know you can. Awesome. All right.